people in New Orleans for the horrific t tornadoes that we were watching. And yeah. Wish you all the best. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you all for your service to our country in this issue. Dr. Volkov, you and your written testimony, and then several years ago, mentioned the potential role of marijuana, cannabis, upon the adolescent brain as being a precipitator of, you, of serious mental illness. Is that a correct statement of your concern? Definitively, this is one of the areas that we are most concerned of with the legalization of marijuana. So let me ask you, that would suggest that states which have had a uh, more liberal uh, legalization of marijuana, say Colorado, would have an increased incidence of serious mental illness among adolescents and young adults than a state with more restrictive laws and presumably less uh, uh, prevalence of usage. Is that a finding that you've had? In the United States, uh, there are no studies that have documented that. In Europe and across the world, yes. Now, uh, hang on. It's documented that, that a more relaxed legalization of marijuana is associated on a population scale with increased incidence of serious mental illness, just to be, just to be sure? Specifically, in the United States, legalization by some states of marijuana has not been associated with an increase in adolescents' marijuana use. That is something that has not Now, that happened. surprises me because increased, if, we, if you relax blue laws for alcohol, there ends up being more alcohol used by adolescents in that given county or parish. We are seeing significant increases in adults' use of marijuana and young people, but not in adolescents, which is different exactly from what you're saying with the alcohol. Now, what about the young adult? Because the brain, as I recall, continues to develop maybe up till 30. If you're a male, probably 35. So uh, does that young 20, is there an association with increased incidence? Yes, there is. There is, an, for example, there's significant increase in the risk for uh, suicidal behaviors and suicidality associated with marijuana use among young people. And that is when controlling for other factors. And so, so that's just not a cause, that is just not an association, but it's suspected that it's causal. It is an association after controlling for factors like depression. But in order to establish causality, you need to re you require prospective studies that we're currently carrying on on the ABCD. Now, let me ask, and you may not have had this data, but we've worked hard to expand the ability of Medicaid to address addiction disorder. Um, have you found that states with Medicaid expansion and our state regulations being more uh, in employing these tools Congress has given, have had better outcomes for adolescent and adult addiction or not? There is evidence that some of the states that have expanded Medicaid have been able to provide extended access to medications for opioid use disorders among young adults and adults. The, the data for adolescents is not as clear. There's because very, the, the sample sizes are much smaller. And are we seeing better outcomes or are we just seeing greater utilization of drugs? We are seeing better outcomes. That's great. Um, Dr. Um, Delphine Rittman, um, Dr. Gordon spoke about the RAISE grant and Senator Murphy and I worked in 2016 to expand access to these RAISE grants. Mm -hmm. Now in my state though, I just found out I got 30 people statewide enrolled, 20 in New Orleans, 10 in Baton Rouge, and no other city has these programs. Mm -hmm. Now, is that a function of, of inadequate funding, or is that a function of my state not so completely employing? Um, uh, because adolescent suicide, we're hearing, is a huge issue, serious mental illness, and yet something that Murphy and Cassidy were attempting to employ has not been widely deployed. Uh, what can we learn from you about this? And thank you for that question. And, and we can certainly have, uh, you know, additional follow-up conversations about this as well. I, I'd had to look specifically in terms of, you know, were there other um, organizations that applied for the resources or applied for the? Is there adequate money there for it? For the a raise grant for the coordinated specialty care, I think it's called mm -hmm. the CSC. Yeah. As a ten percent set aside within SAMHSA for mental illness, mm -hmm. is that adequate, or does Congress need to look at that? Because from Dr. Gordon's testimony and what I've learned before, it's highly effective. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I guess my question is, mm -hmm. do we need to give you more money for this, or is it just get our states to apply for it? 
Yeah, I mean, it, it is definitely an effective program, and if we are appropriated more money, we will gladly receive it because it is a program that makes I'm still not sure I'm getting difference. the answer to my question. Is more money needed, or is the state just not applying? You know, I'd have to go back and, and look specifically in terms of the number of states that have applied for that. I don't have that with me, but if, we can certainly if follow up. Can I ask Dr. Gordon? Is, Dr. Gordon, any insight on that? Um, regards to the, I mean, whether additional monies would. No, no, whether or not, what's the reason why it's not more widely deployed? Oh, well, I think uh, we, it is a challenging program to, um, to administer. You have to be willing to implement some changes at a clinic level. Um, but I can't speak to Louisiana's case, um, but we, uh, one of the things that the research project demonstrated is that um, you can implement it in clinical settings, but you still have to have the will at the local level to do so. Um, I can't speak to the level of funding and whether it's, it's adequate for the situation. I will say that while there are thousands of Americans currently enrolled in these clinics, there are probably thousands more who would benefit from it. Uh, and so uh, expanding access to coordinated specialty care for first episode psychosis is a good thing. Got it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. I'm going to call on Senator Baldwin next. I'm going to turn the gavel over to Senator Kane while I go and vote. 